This is the fourth lecture for text unit 7. At this point, we are ready to talk about atoms with more than, elect one, more than one electron. And a particular topic of this lecture is electron configurations and orbital diagrams. Electrons in atoms tend to be in the lowest energy state. This is the most stable state and how they're most commonly found in nature. So if there's one electron, it has n equals 1. This is the lowest energy state. If n equals 1, that means L has to be 0, because L ranges from 0 to n minus 1. And m sub L has to be 0, because m sub L ranges from negative L to L and steps in 1. Okay. Therefore, if an electron has n equals 1, it's in a 1s orbital. n equals 1, s means l equals 0. m sub s is plus 1 half or minus 1 half because m sub s does not depend on any of the other quantum numbers. This situation is often shown pictorially like this. Here is... Uh, for one electron in a 1s function, you have a 1s slot like this. And an upward arrow indicates positive m sub s, and a downward arrow indicates negative m sub s. Okay, so this information, 1s and the value of m sub s, can be contained in this sort of picture. This sort of picture is called an orbital diagram. Okay, suppose we have two electrons. The lowest energy situation is both have n equals 1. Put both in the lowest energy state, or shell. The Pauli principle says only two electrons may occupy an orbital and they must have opposite spins. Another way of putting this is two electrons cannot have an identical set of quantum numbers. Here we have two electrons with n equals 1, and therefore L is 0 and M sub L equals 0. They're both 1s electrons. Okay, so they have three quantum numbers the same. Therefore, the spin quantum numbers have to be different. One is plus 1 half, and the other is minus 1 half. This is an orbital diagram for a helium atom, for example, an atom with two electrons in the lowest energy possible state. Well, what if we have three electrons? All right, at this point, it's helpful to look at your periodic table on handout and remind yourself that this is the lithium atom. There are two electrons per orbital, so all three can't have n equals one. One has to have the next lowest possible energy, which is n equals two. It turns out the lowest energy subshell or n equals 2, is the s subshell. We can show this like this. This is the conventional orbital diagram for lithium. Convention is if you have an electron which it's by itself it is an orbital. You draw it uh, as m sub s plus 1 half, pointing up. Although in truth it doesn't make a difference whether it's up or down. As far as the inner real world as far as the energy is concerned in the real world. <clears throat> Electron 4, which is the beryllium atom if you look at your table, can also go into the 2s orbital, although now naturally we have to ha we have two electrons, they have to have different m sub s values, or we say opposite spins. So here is an orbital diagram for beryllium. This, uh, this figure taken from the text unit shows the energies of the subshells. Our first two electrons were able to go into 1s and then we could hold no more. The next lowest energy 
is 2s. Note that 2s and 2p have different energies in multi-electron atoms. In one electron atom they have the same energy. But this is a multi-electron atom. 2s is lower than 2p. So electrons 3 and 4 went here. The next electron, if we put one more electron in, if we start talking about a boron for example, has to go into one of the 2p orbitals. Alright, now remember p means L equals 1. There are three m sub L values, negative 1, 0, 1, 1, and therefore there are three orbitals. They all have the same energy, the three orbitals of the 2p subshell. So in this energy picture, uh, the 2p orbitals appear like this. Notice that next is 3s, and next is 3p. So here we have an orbital diagram for a boron atom. Five electrons, the first four and one s and two s, as we've already seen. The quote-unquote next electron, the fifth electron, goes into 2p. By convention, this is written, this electron appears, or this symbol for the electron appears, in the leftmost orbital pointing up. This is convention, because in real life it could be in any one of these three orbitals, and have either m sub s plus one half or minus one half. <clears throat> okay, this is the orbital diagram. Down here, I present this information in a condensed form called an electron configuration. 1s2 indicates two electrons in the 1s orbital. 2s2 indicates two 2s electrons, or we say two electrons in the 2s orbital and 2p1 indicates one 2p electron. All right. Now if we want to make an orbital diagram for carbon, we need to add one more electron. At this point we have to consider something called Hund's rule. This says that electrons should not be paired within a subshell until and unless each orbital in the subshell has an electron or one electron. In other words, electron number six cannot be put into the same orbital as electron number five. This is correct, incorrect. It has to go into a different orbital and we draw that diagram like this. Two electrons in the 2p orbitals. Can't pair them until we have each orbital occupied in the 2p subshell occupied with one electron. Right, so this is the correct orbital diagram from uh, for carbon. Two electrons in the 2p subshell. By convention we put the two electrons in from the left and work our way across. All right. At this point, you can attempt orbital diagrams and electron configurations for nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine, and neon before moving on. In other words, take a piece of paper and write down what this should look like and the electron configuration for everything else in the second row. Here are orbital diagrams and electron configurations for the remainder of the second row atoms of the periodic table. Here are the orbital diagrams which appear to the left, and here are the corresponding electron configurations. Notice nitrogen has three unpaired electrons. Electrons 5, 6, and 7 go into the 2p subshell, one into each orbital. Now, when we come to oxygen, we have an electron in each orbital of the 2p subshell. So the next electron, electron number 8, has to go into one of the 2p orbitals. By convention, we choose the one farthest to the left. And remember, they have to have different m sub L values, as indicated by the arrows. Fluorine has an additional electron which appears in this 2p orbital. By convention, we fill uh, from the left to the right. So when we so electron 9 appears here in the fluorine. 
The tenth electron for the neon atom appears here. And notice that when we have arrived at neon, the end of the row, we have filled the valence 2s and 2p subshells. Here we have electron configurations for each of the orbital diagrams. As I said, the information appears here in condensed form. <coughs> this contains less information from the orbital diagram because this does not contain information about the pairing or the unpairing of electrons in the 2p subshell. It's, all you know is there are three electrons in the 2p subshell. It does not indicate what slots they occupy. While we're on the subject, your periodic table can help you make orbital diagrams and electron configuration. Note that the filling of the n equals 2 s and p subshells at the end of a row of a periodic table coincided. Because the s and p subshells are the only p subshells at n equals 2, the 11th electron would have to go into an n equals 3 subshell. And if you refer back to the energy diagram, specifically it goes into the 3s subshell. Coincidentally, sodium is at the beginning of the third row. So the first electron goes into 3s. All right. At this point, you can write an orbital diagram for every third row element before moving on in the presentation. All right, as we've seen, first uh, the uh, electron number 11 goes into a 3s orbital. Here are the uh, here are 10 electrons in the 1s, 2s, and 2p subshells. Magnesium has one more electron that can also be tucked into the 3s subshell. When we come to aluminum, the next electron has to go into the 3p subshell because the 3s subshell is full. Notice at this point we jump all the way over to another chunk of the periodic table on the right. Silicon tucks the second electron into a 3p subshell. Phosphorus has three electrons in the 3p subshell. And then you can see the placement of the additional electrons for sulfur, chlorine, and argon. Notice the filling pattern is very similar to what we've previously seen. In other words, the orbital diagram for aluminum, the 3s and 3p arrangement looks very similar to the 2s and 2p arrangement for boron, the atom above. Similarly, the arrangement of the 3s and 3p electrons looks much like the 2s and 2p arrangement for nitrogen, the element above. Also note that when we arrive at the end of the row argon, we have filled the 3s and 3p subshells. <coughs> All right. Here at the end of the third row, we conclude the fourth lecture for Unit 4. More on orbital diagrams and electron configurations will be discussed in the next lecture.